Thanks for joining us today for a special edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, and if you've ever experienced a miracle or you know someone who has experienced a miracle, you know how special that feeling can be. Well, in just a moment, during the next half hour, Dr. Dobson is going to share with you a recording of a program that is so special to him because it involves a miraculous event actually taking place. So glad you've joined us. Family Talk starts right now. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Family Talk. I'm Dr. James Dobson, and today you're going to hear one of my all-time favorite recordings. You're actually going to hear a miracle occur right on the air. It's a recording of that miracle, and it involves uh, Pastor Dwayne Miller, who's going to share his personal story with us. Well, I really enjoy this program too, Doctor. And to get our listeners up to date, Pastor Dwayne Miller is the former pastor of Pinnacle Church in the Cedar Creek Lake area near Dallas, Texas. He currently serves as founder and executive director of New Voice Ministries, which seeks to reach people in every corner of the world with the good news. He frequently hears from people who have been inspired by what you're about to hear in today's classic conversation. So don't go anywhere. You will be rewarded for paying attention in the next few minutes. So now let's get to the story and the miracle that I promised you on this classic edition of Family Talk. Let's go back to 1990 on a Sunday morning. I think it was January, January. Uh, Sunday was. morning, which really kind of turned your life upside down. Oh, it did. I had been the pastor at First Baptist Church in Brenham for four years at that point in time, or most of four years. And uh, that morning, I woke up with a virus, just the flu virus, and had that yucky feeling that you have when you know you're coming down with something. And uh, had three services to preach that morning as general Sunday morning, 8.30, 11 o'clock in that evening. But I was really not feeling well at all, and, and by the evening service, I could not speak. I, uh, the lary- it was a laryngitis-type sound, and it was just so intense that it just wasn't there. Church prayed for me that night and sent me home to bed, and I just endured the flu. It really was nothing extraordinary that I hadn't had before, except that I could not get over it in my throat. I tell people everywhere I go that it's the sorest my throat has ever been, but my wife says I say that every time I get one, so my credibility (laughs) may be in question. But this one didn't go away. Did not. At the end of two weeks, or almost two weeks, all the other symptoms of the flu had cleared, except I still had the throat sore and couldn't speak well. So I went to consult a specialist, a friend of mine in Houston that I knew, and he looked at my throat, told me that it was swollen almost completely shut still. And that the infection was still pretty rampant down there. So he put me on some more medication that was a little stronger than what he'd been doing. Sent me back home for another couple of weeks. At the end of that period of time, it's now about a month into it, uh, when I went back to see him, the infection had cleared and the swelling had gone down, but the voice still wasn't there. The easiest way I know to describe to someone listening to what it felt like and sounded like is to tell them to put their thumb and their forefinger right above their Adam's apple. And the windpipe is right there. And if you try to squeeze on that windpipe and talk at the same time, that's, mm. that's the sound. And that's also the feeling. It was as if someone had their hand on my throat and was squeezing it and wouldn't turn it loose. There was not excruciating pain with that, but it was just a constant pressure that, that just did not go away. Were you preaching during this time? No. Were you using your voice no, at all? Not at all. The doctors had asked me to not use the voice at all because they weren't sure what the problem was. And so they had put me on total voice rest. So for about six weeks, I wrote notes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also a challenge, believe me, particularly for a preacher uh, <laughs> and one who loves to talk. Um, but we did not use the voice at all during that period of time, uh, trying to give it every opportunity to recover. But it did not get better. Not at all. And uh, when it did not recover, my friend felt that whatever the problem was was beyond what he was prepared to deal with. And so he referred me to the Baylor College of Medicine there in Houston at our medical center. And when I went there and they agreed to take me as a patient, I immediately picked up 13 specialists as a team. I mean, immediately. And they began to diagnose, try to diagnose initially, and then to treat uh, my condition. Uh, From what I understand about your story, and I'm hearing it for the first time in detail, but you never did get a diagnosis or a real clear diagnosis of what was wrong with you. It took a very long time. The first diagnosis that they came back with, and, and every time they would diagnose, they always used the word tentative. 
because it was very difficult. They could not put their finger on an organic problem. More than once, the doctor said to me, if I could just go in there and take your larynx out, I could fix this. I could tell you what's going on. And, uh, but he said, you know, it's not worth that radical move. And he was teasing, but he was serious because they got very frustrated also. We went through an incredible amount of testing. Uh, I want folks to understand that my doctors were some of the finest human beings and the most capable human beings on the face of the earth. This was not difficult because they weren't qualified. It was difficult because it was, I believe, God ordained to be difficult. I, I see that now looking back at it. I didn't see it at the time. Were you whispering your prayers to the Lord oh, during that time, uh, Dwayne? I ran the gamut of emotions. There were times when I was angry with God. There was times when I was in despair, when I questioned. Um, I had people that I'm sure meant well, but their counsel was questionable, who came to me and told me that there must be sin in my life or this wouldn't be happening yeah, to me. Yeah, that's the usual rule. Uh, or there, that if I had sufficient faith, you know, I would be restored. Um, and when you're going through a valley like that and to have someone, even though their intentions may be well intended or whatever, may be right, to have those mm. words said to you are just devastating. Did you feel in the beginning that God called you to be a minister? Oh, there was never any doubt in my mind. <laughs> the best counsel that I got was from a very dear friend of mine that I had gone to school with and have known for years, but had not talked to him in probably 15 years. And he called me. He had heard of my struggling emotionally with all of this, as well as physically. And in our conversation, he said to me, he said, Duane, do you remember when we prayed together and you told the Lord that you would go anywhere and you would do anything that he wanted you to do? And I said, yeah, I remember that. And he said, well, God's just taken you up on it. We finally re ultimately resigned the church after taking a leave of absence. Uh, I felt that it was not fair to the church for us to remain as senior pastor any longer. They needed a pastor, and they had waited over a year for us or about a year for us to become healthy. So when we resigned and we moved back to the city of Houston, my wife had to resume a career. She had been trained as an x-ray technologist. But when our children were small, we had consciously decided that she would stay home and, and be mom. And we were blessed of God that we were able to do that. But now she was forced back into a career that's very technical. And she hadn't worked in it for 15 years. I mean, that's a scary thing to have to do that. And, and my wife was an absolute pillar of strength. I, I sing her praises everywhere I go. And it's very important for people to understand that you know, in our society, there's an awful lot of, I'll stay with you till I get a better deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joylene, when she said, better or worse, richer or poorer, she meant it. And um, our relationship has become even stronger through all of the things that we have been through. And she is the most precious lady on the face of the earth, bar none. I know that uh, there was eventually an explanation. I'm not sure how much anybody believed it, but that the myelin sheath, which is that right. substance that coats the nerve endings to your vocal cord from the brain had eroded away. Is that what they think? They think it, that the virus had been able to penetrate the myelin sheath and uh, had damaged the nerves. Yeah. And so the vocal cords were simply not getting the message from the brain that they were supposed to move. We come to this moment, uh, which I think people are going to find one of the most interesting uh, seven-minute pieces of tape they've ever heard. Let me put it in in reference to myself. Sure. I found it to be one of the most interesting recordings I've ever heard because you were invited to Houston to speak to your old Sunday school class. Yeah. This is the only Sunday school class in that church that records its speakers, That's uh, the, the Sunday school teachers. And the subject, as I understand, was chosen years before. That's correct. It was standard Southern Baptist Bible book series curriculum. It mm -hmm. is not anything that was extraordinary. We were just doing what we do. So you came to speak through your scratchy, uh, whispery voice. Uh, that, everybody understood <laughs> they were going to have a hard time hearing you. That class had asked me to take over the teaching again some eight months before this. And, you know, I had responded to them, guys, I can't teach anymore, but you can't listen to this for an hour. And I think more out of deference to me because they knew how badly I missed being able to teach they said, oh, we'll listen just really carefully. <laughs> and so we had found a microphone, and by putting the windscreen literally on my lips, it was touching my lips as I spoke, most of the time I could be understood. And that's how we were doing this on this particular morning. All right, let's hear this seven-minute piece of tape. Listen very carefully to what happens in the midst of this uh, recording. To say that every single person will 
always be healed because Jesus died on the cross is a misinterpretation of scripture. Not true. Won't work. Isaiah 53 doesn't talk about physical healing. I'm sorry. That's just not the context. And to impress that there causes a misinterpretation of scripture. That's wrong. On the other hand, to say that, since we don't have anything after the book of Acts, that miracles ended at the book of Acts and they never happen again, is equally as wrong. Because you have put God in a box both ways. And he doesn't want to be in the box. So, the psalmist says, I'm excited, bless the Lord, O my soul. One of his benefits is, he heals all of my diseases. And then in verse 4 he says, and he redeems my life from the pit. Now, I like that verse just a whole lot. I have had, and you have had in times past, pit experiences. We've both had, we've all had times when our life seemed to be in a pit, in a grave. And we didn't have an answer for the pit we find ourselves in. And I don't understand this right now. I'm a bit overwhelmed at the moment. I'm not quite sure what to say or do. <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> It sounds funny to say at a loss for words. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I <sighs> He redeems my life from the pit. <laughs> and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is abounding in love. The Lord will not accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, that's mercy. Or repay us according to our iniquities, that's mercy. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. I'm sorry for the emotions. No, I'm not. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm not. I wish I could let you see how I feel inside right now. I wish I could see how I feel inside right now. <sighs> the, yeah. That's good.
Dwayne, I've lived all these years. I have never heard anything like that. You were literally healed while you were speaking. Absolutely in the middle of a word. You weren't praying. You weren't asking for healing. No. It just happened. No. What in the world were you thinking? You were obviously overwhelmed. I, um, I have not yet thoroughly, I guess, analyzed exactly how I feel. I, I'm still overwhelmed with it. It's all I can do to sit here today just listening to that tape and not absolutely break down in tears again. I am so overwhelmed with what God has done. You've never had any other voice problems since No, it? not at all. In fact, I've been back to the doctors and we've gone through all the tests again and some more videotape of my vocal cords. And the doctor, when it was all finished, showed me and said, Dwayne, not only are you okay, I can't find any evidence that you ever had a voice problem. You know, what made that so interesting is that you were making the case there that God doesn't always choose right. to heal. If you'd have been standing up there saying, you know, God's a genie in a bottle and he'll do everything you tell him to do, it would have been a little phony. But you were saying yeah. exactly the opposite, and he chose to touch you he at that He is moment. sovereign God. We cannot put God in a formula that says, if I, then God. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't manipulate God. And you can't put him in a time box and tell him to behave himself and not get out of the box. You can't do it either way. God is beyond our comprehension. He is sovereign. And the day I think I can understand God, he won't be God anymore. I will be. You can no more explain the healing than you could the sickness not three years before. The only thing I can explain now is a purpose in that God has allowed what has happened to me to be a witness to his power and his majesty and his sovereignty to people in a manner in which perhaps would have never happened any other way. And if, if God wants to be glorified and is glorified in that manner, then he is sovereign God. So be it. Dwayne, at the moment that your voice started clearing up there, you seemed shocked. Oh, I, mean, I was. It must have been an unbelievable experience. I can tell you what was going on in my mind. I, that I can remember clearly. The first thing I felt was just the release when I said the word pit, you have had in times past and I have had pit experiences, it was on the word pit that it just let go. It was just, it had been there and it was gone, just like that. Nothing any more dramatic or less dramatic than that. It was just gone. And you knew it. Oh, it startled me because the pressure had been, it, would, it was like someone had been choking me for three years and suddenly it was gone. The hand was, that had been on my throat wasn't there anymore. It was just mm -hmm. gone. The pressure was relieved just that instantaneously. But the next thing I remember after I was startled, I, I began to say a few more phrases or sentences, and I stopped, paused. And the thought that went through my mind, I'll never forget, was, is that what I think it is? And then I said a few more phrases, and I realized, yeah, that is what I think it is. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. We did do a whole series of programs on when God doesn't make sense, those occasions when he may choose not to heal and he may say, my grace is sufficient unto you, you know, That's when he right. says, carry it. That's right. But he still does heal in yes. cases that he chooses. That's right. And we can't lose sight of that. And, uh, and he does ask us to bring our, our needs and our burdens to him. And, and we are to have hope. We are yeah. never to lose hope. We are never to lose sight of the fact that he is God. And he is able to create and recreate. He is in the resurrection business. And when we think everything is dead, that's when he's about to do something exciting. Dwayne, you know what I would like you to do at the end of this program? I'd like you to pray. You're a minister. And I would like you to pray for the people out there who are listening to us, who are in despair, because whatever their physical problem is is still there. And they have lost hope and maybe even lost faith that mm -hmm. God is there. Would you close this program in prayer for those folks? Absolutely. Our Father, I thank you today for this privilege to pray for your people who are hurting and broken. Lord, I know what the inside of that pit looks like. Mm -hmm. And I know how slippery the walls can be when you're trying to climb out. And I know the darkness that becomes oppressive at times, when it seems an answer is just not found. But Lord, I also know that as surely as Joseph sat in prison, you had a purpose. Mm, you did, Lord. <laughs> and you brought it to pass. And Lord, as surely as I was in my pit, you had a purpose and you've brought it to pass. Lord, I guess two words that I would love folks to hang on to from the scripture are the words, but God. For when we despair, but God can change it in a heartbeat. 
in an eyelash blink. So Lord, today, I pray for every person that's listening to this program that they will take new heart, new faith, new confidence, new hope in recognizing that you're still on the throne, Mm -hmm. that you're still relevant, that you still intervene in lives, and that you have a purpose for everything that's happening. Lord, I believe that most of us could deal with anything if we just could understand the purpose. Help us to trust you. With one hand, perhaps take hold of your omnipotence, the power to change, but with the other hand, grip tightly to your omniscience Hmm. and trust your wisdom. Help us today to do that, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dwayne, there is such ministry in your story and in your prayer. I just pray that it will be helpful to people out there across the nation. In fact, you've shared the story before, and you're writing a book on that subject. Yes. Well, you be sure and send us the first copy. Probably, <laughs> probably the second. My wife has second. dibs on the first. Oh, <laughs> it is good to hear that strong, oh, steady voice. And uh, I just pray that the Lord's arms will continue to be around you in thank your ministry. You. you really love him, don't you? Oh, with all my soul. But would you have loved him? Yeah. If he had not touched your absolutely, voice. you never gave him an absolute. Either you touch no. me, or I won't serve you. I I could no That's more do that. That's the biggest trap. No. I mean, that one leads to despair. Yeah. Absolutely, I could not do that. I'm just not built that way. God had redeemed me. That that psalm begins. David begins it with, "He has forgiven all my sins." This miracle of my healing is a wonderful thing, and I thank God for it. Don't misunderstand me. I am I am excited beyond words. But my most exciting miracle is the fact that God has forgiven my Mm -hmm. sin and I have relationship with Him and that has nothing to do with my physical condition. And that's the ultimate miracle in living. Dwayne, God bless you, friend. We just met today. I I consider you a lifetime friend. Bless God. (laughs) And the same in, in return. Come back and see us. Thank you. Well, you can see why I said at the top of the program that this, this is one of my favorite stories uh, through the years. I aired it uh, back, I think, in 1994, and uh, people have heard it uh, since then. They got copies of it. They've been sharing it. And as I said, uh, Pastor Miller is confronted by people who've heard that story everywhere he goes because it is dramatic. Uh, You're listening to Family Talk, and this has been a timeless message because of the truth that we heard from Pastor Dwayne Miller. God is sovereign, and even when we don't understand why he does what he does, we can have comfort in knowing that we can trust him. This truth will help you cope no matter what you're going through and what you're facing. We can trust his heart to work in our lives. Now, Dwayne's story uh, in this book that he talked about there at the end of the program was originally called Out of the Silence, and it's being republished under the name Speechless. And if you know someone who needs to hear this conversation, uh, maybe someone who needs assurance now, some answers, some perspective, then let me encourage you to download a copy of this broadcast from our website at drjamesdobson.org. Let me also do something I don't often do, and that's make reference to my own book, but I think it fits here. Uh, The book is When God Doesn't Make Sense, and that's one of my favorite books that I've written because there are moments when all of us hit a wall, moments when the pieces don't fit, moments when you uh, try to understand what God's doing and understand the troubles or difficulties or illnesses that you're going through. And we cry out to the Lord and we say, why, God? Nearly all of us have a moment like that sooner or later. And in fact, uh, even Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Have you had a moment like that where you uh, felt like saying, why have you forsaken me, Lord? Why am I going through this difficulty? And uh, the truth of the matter is we all face them. And what the Lord wants of us in a moment like that is to trust him. 
He has not promised to give you all the answers. He has not promised to solve every problem that occurs in your life. But he has promised never to leave you. And that's what I tried to uh, deal with in my book, When God Doesn't Make Sense. The website, again, is drjamesdobson.org or call us at 877-732-6825. And a member of my staff will be happy to help you. And um, come by and see us here at Family Talk. We'd love to have you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Pastor Dwayne Miller, for sharing your story with us. We will not forget it. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.